वैसे कभी मुझे हिंदी बोलने का मौका नहीं मिलता है आप लोग तो सब जानते हो लेकिन आज मैं आज मिल रहा है आया निशान मैं हूँ मुंबई का क्या बोलता है बीडू In 1895, Italian economist Vilfredo Pareto concluded that the 80-20 rule seemed to apply to money, property, and the accumulation of fortunes in every society. After years of research, he discovered that 20% of individuals and families, those he called the vital few, controlled 80% of the wealth and property throughout Europe. The 80-20 rule seemed to apply to almost every area of human endeavor, especially tasks and responsibilities. That is, 20% of the work that you do will account for 80% of the value of all the work that you do. Peter Drucker says it's often the 90-10 rule. Sometimes 10% of the work that you do will account for 90% of the value. The greatest enemy of time management and personal productivity today is majoring in minors. I have been extremely consistent with my morning disciplines this week. I made a promise to my accountability partner that I would show up to my morning workout and morning meditation every single day. Normally, this is like the most important aspect of my life to get the morning routine right, to get the morning disciplines right, but lately I'd been neglecting it. Lately, because of work pressures, at least that's what I'd been telling myself, I had fallen into this habit of missing the morning meditation and then trying to make up for it in the evening. And just getting back on track, attempting to have an immaculate week has been really profound in how productive I've been this week. This sort of got me thinking about how modern society is constructed so that you feel productive while doing the things that aren't the most essential, doing the things that aren't most important to your life's work. Your, you know, I don't know if I necessarily believe in a purpose, but the work that you've set out for yourself, the vibrations that were whispered to you in your ear, that sort of mentality of the work that you're supposed to do. We have so many factors in our lives that prevent us from doing what's most essential to us. We have all these little machinations that keep us from doing our best work. And in some ways, to get to the bottom of what you're supposed to do, to get to the essence of what your real work is, because right now, out of the hundred things that are on your to-do list, you only have one or two things that you're actually deeply supposed to do. The most important thing in addressing that is getting away from the world, is getting away from all the machinations, all the noise of society, and focusing in on that one thing. And the more I've been adopting this mentality of doing, or at least attempting to doing my most essential work, the more I've felt that I've become sort of a lone wolf. I've been isolating myself a little bit because I've realized that most of the things that are offered to me, most of the offers, opportunities, priorities that people are throwing at me, they're not my own. They're not my own. And so I have to sort of neglect them, try to get away from them and focus on myself. My office is currently having like a boat cruise, get to know you, get to know other team members and other branches of the company. So I'm off to go do that. Being a lone wolf doesn't mean that you can't or shouldn't have friends. You should have to build a business in solitary confinement in your house or that you should be alone all the time. But it does mean that you should be self-reliant, self-disciplined, and should maintain clarity on the top 20% or top 10% of activities that could move you most powerfully towards what you want. You know, I've recently been reflecting a lot on this quote from the works of Brian Tracy on his book, Time Power, on the Pareto Principle, this idea of the 80-20 Principle, uh, because I feel that I've recently really began to understand what my 20% of activities are, what my top 10% of activities are, and yet now that I've figured that out a little bit, I feel all these external pressures in my life more than ever. It wasn't too long ago in which I wished that my life had more excitement, friendship, uh, opportunities to connect with other people because I was trying to fill up this lack of wanting to be not alone, to be in the company of others. With time, I'm beginning to realize that in order for me to do my best work, oftentimes what's required is having a little bit of that lone wolf mentality. You know, the best work I could do right now is to be alone and to study, to study the skills that I need to get me to the next place that I want to be at. And when I miss out on that work, when I try to alleviate the sort of loneliness that comes with this path, that's when I miss out on 
my best work, the stuff that I'm actually supposed to do. And especially because we live in times where our attention is like the most valuable thing that companies, people, everyone is trying to grasp at. The best thing you can do for yourself is to recognize what your key result areas are. What are the most important 20% of the objectives that would give you 80% of the results? What are the perspectives that are in the top 10% that would give you 90% of the results? Once you recognize those things, you shouldn't let anyone get in your way of doing those activities because that's, that's what you were meant to do. Oftentimes in this age of distraction, it takes going at things alone, figuring out what your Menlo's lab could be, your version of what Thomas Edison or Nikola Tesla would have been at, where they work deeply alone so that they can do their life's actual work and not give in to the distractions that surround them. And for those of us who are willing to put our path first, to put our key result areas, our main objectives, before the machinations of society, all the distractions that are at our fingertips, to us I say, greatness is coming. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.